Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can change the way that the information within the contacts folder is viewed. In Outlook 2010, you can do this by clicking the Home tab in the ribbon when viewing the Contacts folder, and then clicking on a desired view choice from within the Current View group. In Outlook 2007, you do this by selecting View, and then choosing Current View from the menu bar. This will then display a listing of the many views of the Contacts folder provided by default within Outlook. You can then select whichever listed view you feel is most beneficial to you. You can also create your own customized views of the Contacts folder. If using Outlook 2010, you can do this by clicking the View tab in the ribbon, and then clicking the Change View button that appears in the Current View group. From the drop-down menu that appears, you can then select the Manage Views command. In Outlook 2007, you can do this by selecting View, then rolling down to Current View, and then choosing Define Views from the menu bar. Now at this point, in either version, a dialog box will appear on screen. In Outlook 2010, it's called the Manage All Views dialog box. In Outlook 2007, it's called the Custom View Organizer. In both versions, it simply displays all of the available views and their associated settings. Here you can select any view that you want, and then modify it, or reset modifications made to one of the selected views. You can also create, edit, or delete your own custom views that you have created using this dialog box. To create a new view, just click the New button at the right of the dialog box. That will open the Create a New View dialog box, and here you type a name for the new view into the Name of New View text box. Below that, you select what type of view you want to create. Table, which lays out the information in a table, like the Inbox folder does by default. Timeline, which shows items in a timeline view, like the Journal folder does by default. Card, which lays out the information in a card view, like the Contacts folder does within the Address Cards view. Business Card, which displays information in the view using a layout like the one used by the Business Card view of the Contact folder. Day, Week, Month, which shows information in a Day, Week, Month style like the Calendar folder does by default. Or Icon, which shows icons for the items like your typical Window folder does by default. Now once you've selected your Base Folder view, then select who will have this view available to them. You can choose this folder, visible to everyone, this folder, visible only to me, or all contact folders. Then click OK to launch yet another dialog box where you can further customize the view. In Outlook 2010, this dialog box is called the Advanced View Settings dialog box. In Outlook 2007, it's called the Customize View dialog box. However, the options that you have for customizing the view are the same for both versions. The dialog box has seven buttons that you can click to set options for your view. Based on your base view type, however, not all of the buttons will necessarily be available. Clicking the Columns button, or the Fields button as it's called in Outlook 2007, launches the Show Columns dialog box. This is called the Show Fields dialog box in Outlook 2007. Here you can use the drop-down in the upper left corner to choose which set of fields you wish to see appear in the left list. To move an available field into your new view, select it in the left list, and then click the Add button in the middle of the dialog box to add it to the list at right. You can then select the field from the list at right and reorganize its position by selecting it and then clicking the Move Up or Move Down buttons until it's in the place that you desire. Now click OK when you're done adding and organizing the fields within your view. Clicking the Group By button launches the Group By dialog box. Here you can use the drop-down under the Group Items By to select a field by which you can group the items within your view. This is usually only used for the table-style views, 
as it will group the same values in the selected field or fields into expandable and collapsible groups within your table view. You can select up to four fields by which to group. You can also set whether they will be grouped in ascending order or descending order by selecting the desired sorting option to the right end of each grouped field. When you're done here, just click the OK button to set grouping for your view. Clicking the Sort button launches the Sort dialog box. Here you can use the drop-down available under the Sort Items By and then By sections to indicate by which field or fields you want to sort the view. You can sort by the values in up to four fields and they can be sorted in either ascending order or descending order by selecting the appropriate option at the right end of each field. Now when you're done here, you can click OK to set the sorting for your view. Clicking the Filter button launches the Filter dialog box. This dialog box consists of four tabs, Contacts, More Choices, Advanced, and SQL. You click on the tab that you want to use to set criteria that will either include or exclude certain items within your view. On the Contacts tab, you can choose criteria that will allow you to filter by various common contact fields. On the More Choices tab, you can choose criteria that will allow you to filter by assigned categories, message statuses, message option settings, and other more advanced filtering possibilities. On the Advanced tab, you can use the Field drop-down to select from any of the available fields in Outlook that you want to use as a filter. You can then use the Condition drop-down to select a comparison condition and, if needed, type the value to which you want to compare the field's value into the last text box. That will then add it to the list above. Clicking the SQL tab allows you to create a statement using structured query language to select which items you wish to see. You can do this if you're familiar with how SQL is used in the Outlook application. When you're done creating any filters necessary for your view, click the OK button to set the desired filters for your view. Clicking the Other Settings button launches the Other Settings dialog box. Here you can adjust the font display for the items within your view. The content available here will change depending on the style of view that you are trying to create. So you can make any adjustments that you want and then click the OK button to apply them to your new view. Clicking the Conditional Formatting button, or the Automatic Formatting button as it's called in Outlook 2007, launches the Conditional Formatting dialog box, or the Automatic Formatting dialog box as it's called in Outlook 2007. Here you can set new rules to apply to items that meet a given criteria, and then have them apply a default formatting to items that match that rule. There are some rules that are already in place in this dialog box, and you can add more if you want. To add a new rule, you simply click the Add button at the right side of the dialog box. It will add a new rule to the list. You can then type a name for the rule into the Name text box. You then click the Font dialog box to set the font formatting that the item should use when the condition that you're about to specify is met. Then click OK in the font dialog box to set the desired font. You then click the condition button to set up the filter that when met applies the formatting that you selected. Then click the OK button when you're finished setting your filter. Then click the OK button again when you're finished setting your conditional formatting. Now if you are using a table view in Outlook, then you cl can click the Format Columns button to specify a display format for each field that you have within your view. 
Just select the name of the field whose display you wish to modify from the available fields list at the left side of this dialog box, and then change its associated settings at the right side of the dialog box. When you're finished changing the display of the columns within your table view, you can then click the OK button to apply them. Now once you're satisfied with all of the view's settings, go ahead and click the OK button in the Advanced View Settings dialog box, or the Customize View dialog box as it's called in 2007, to return to the Manage All Views dialog box, or the Custom View Organizer dialog box as it's called in 2007. You will now see the name of your view shown in the list of views available within the dialog box. To apply your view, just click on its name to select it from the list, and then click the Apply View button at the bottom of the dialog box. Now another way to apply the view is to select the name of your custom view that appears in the Current View group on the Home tab of the ribbon in Outlook, if you're using Outlook 2010. It will also appear in the side menu that is shown if you select View and then choose Current View from the menu bar if using Outlook 2007. Note that if you want to modify a view that you have created, you can select the name of the view from the listing shown in the Advanced View Settings dialog box or the Customized View dialog box if you're using Outlook 2007. and then simply click the Modify button at the right side of the dialog box. Now in this same area, you can also select the name of a custom view that you've created and click the Delete button to delete the view if you will no longer need to use it in the future. Now when you have finished using the Advanced View Settings dialog box, or the Customize View dialog box as it's called in Outlook 2007, just click the Close button at the bottom of the dialog box to return to the Contacts folder view. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.